If you'd believed all the hype, you'd think that voice search is happening every minute, every day. But of course, we can see even in this room that is not necessarily the case. Today, we're going to go through a little bit of the context of the current voice landscape. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of the behaviors and attitudes that underpin search and voice search in the UK now. And also then, of course, the implications for brands. This is what search used to look like. A box on a fairly big screen which we used to type into. It now looks a little bit more like this. We have these, we have mobile phones, we're very familiar with them, they're in our pocket, we take them everywhere we go. They are perhaps the most disruptive force in search over the last five to ten years. Indeed, across like prospect clients, 52% of search is via mobile devices. And what makes these particularly interesting is that they have a microphone which opens up new input opportunities from a search perspective. And of course, there's a lot of other signals which are associated with that, most notably location, which means that we're able to deliver more contextually relevant experiences to consumers. But the reality is the definition of a search engine is changing. You could well say that these are our new search engines, our digital assistants, our Alexas, our Google assistants, our Cortanas, our Siri's. And voice interaction and digital assistance are changing the way that we search. And there are some really big numbers. Tractica have said and forecast that nearly 2 billion users of intelligent agents are expected by 2021. It is this growth in digital assistance and intelligent agents which is going to continue to drive voice search. But of course, it isn't just our mobile phones. It isn't just our digital assistants. Increasingly, everything is connected. Increasingly, more and more of our technology we interact with is voice enabled, is in itself a search engine. So whether that's our laptop, our tablet, our games console, or indeed in the future, our cars, there are more and more opportunities for brands to have new meaningful engagements with consumers. And this means more search, but importantly, it also means more voice search. So by 2020, a little over two years away, Comscore are forecasting that 50% of search will come from our voice. So, we at iProspect wanted to get under the skin of exactly what is happening here, now, in the UK. As Stefan said earlier, we have run a survey across the UK, across 1,200 people, to get under the skin of what is happening, those attitudes, behaviours, and again, what that really means for brands. To start with, it's big, but it's not that big. It's still got some room to grow. From our research, 15% of people in the UK are currently using voice search. To put that into context, that's some 7.4 million adults in the UK. Quite a significant number of people. But we know that is set to grow. We need to make sure that voice works for us now, but also that we're prepared for that future of voice as it grows over the next few years. And voice is not just a millennial behavior. From our research, we can see the same proportion of 35 to 54 year olds are using voice search as 18 to 24 year olds. And it's also prevalent across older demographics. So even amongst the 55 and 65 plus, we can see serious engagement with voice. So the implication is that we need voice strategies that are relevant across all age groups, not just those that think about the young. And really that becomes a story of personalization. So how do we personalize targeting how do we personalize messaging and how do we personalize content so that we are relevant across all ages? A good example is car insurance. The declared intent, the voice query across all these ages might, for example, be what is the best car insurance? However, the way that we answer that needs to be very different across all different age groups. At the younger end, we have a certain proposition through the middle. But it might be more about, for example, family or multi-car. And then, of course, we need to think about how we put that proposition in front of older drivers as well. So same declared intent, but very different proposition. We can already, of course, do this within search. We need to continue to think about how we do that to deliver in voice search into the future. Thirdly, it is smartphones that are driving voice search. From our research, 
57% of interactions are via a mobile device versus only 13% on connected smart home devices such as, for example, an Amazon Echo. At the same time from our research, we can see that 76% of people are using voice with only one device. So whilst there's a lot of noise around connected smart home digital assistants, we still in voice need to have that mobile first strategy. We need to continue to optimize consumer experiences on mobile. We need to continue to leverage all that local intent that we know is in not only mobile search, but also voice search. And then also we need to make sure that we have the measurement frameworks in place so that we can correctly attribute value across the ever more complex consumer journeys that span different devices, span online and offline, and increasingly will span text and voice. And whilst our digital assistants might be poised for purchase, from our research we can see that there's six times as much product research happening on mobile devices than on smart home digital assistants. So again, we need to continue to focus on how we create content and optimize experiences that drive product research through mobile just as much as they drive product purchase. So we've spoken there a little bit about the scale of voice who is doing it and how they're doing it, what devices they're using. Now we need to focus in on what are they actually doing. And we see four distinct behaviors. We see people that are performing those repetitive kind of actions, getting news, getting weather, and that's about 20% of people. We see a similar proportion performing smart home device, Internet of Things actions such as playing music, turning on or off a light bulb. But then where I think it gets much more interesting, and uh, I say much more significantly, we have 25% of the UK population that are using voice to purchase intent. So whether that is finding a store location, purchasing or ordering something, or researching something they want to buy, 25% of people in the UK currently have voice intent when using search. And then at the other end of the spectrum, we have this long tail of searches, this long tail of queries, more conversational, more information seeking. So that might be how to change a light bulb, when is the next Game of Thrones episode, how do I clean a wine stain out of the carpet. So two very different kind of ends of the spectrum here in terms of what people are doing in voice. Down one end there's dis a distinct opportunity for brands in terms of utility, meeting human need, delivering against these purchase intents. At the other end there are these new niche content opportunities about how do we deliver against some of this long tail of search in a more creative, entertaining, and engaging ways further up the funnel. And then finally, voice is much more conversational. People are using a lot more question words. It's also much more long tail than text. So what I mean by that is people are using more words when they search. Voice queries are longer than text queries. And they're using more interrogative words, more hows, what, where's, and why's. That means we need to think about the content that we need to deliver against these kind of queries, but also the messaging that we put in front of them. How do we actually go about answering them? And just to bring that to life, a few examples of how text may translate into voice. For example, what might be a text query for BBC Weather? In voice becomes, do I need an umbrella? A very different kind of question, but still the same intent. News, maybe what is the latest news headlines? A query for flights to a Barbados in text, may have an added degree of specificity when we bring that into voice. For example, it may have the qualification of how much of our flights to Barbados. Whilst on desktop or mobile, a search for IKEA might suffice. Via voice, that intent may need to be more specific, where is my closest IKEA? And again, a search for my time might be great on desktop, where you've got 10 different options to pick from. But with voice, you may need the specificity of how do I make a my tie? So we have nuances in the way that people are asking questions of voice, also that they're framing these questions in different ways, which means we need to think about how do we ensure that we are getting in front of these new queries? How do we ensure that we're answering these queries which are being asked in slightly different ways? And how do we ensure that we've got the right content in place in order to really get in front of these new and emerging voice trends? We've spoken five of the key insights from our research. I am now gonna hand over to Jack, who's gonna talk about the things that we all need to do today to win in voice. Thank you very much, Scott.
Okay, so five really interesting insights, but now we want to make sure that sometimes when we're looking to the future, we don't necessarily know what we have to do when we get back to the office and we're talking to our teams or we're doing the work for all of our clients. I just wanted to spend two minutes on three key implications of how we turn those insights into action. The first one is we know that we've got to embrace the long tail conversation. The way that people are searching with voice is different to how they are searching with their hands and fingers. It's not IKEA, it's where's my nearest IKEA. It's not Levi's, it's where can I buy my Levi's 501s. Therefore, we've really got to think about the long tail and the bidding that we're doing against long tail queries. Normally, we capture those through broad match modifier and phrase match. And that will cover all the long tail queries within paid search if you're thinking about hands and fingers. But within voice search, when there's much more of those, we need to make sure that A, that we've got them covered and B, that we're actually applying more of an exact match strategy to those long tail queries because there is a chance with voice search that the CPCs are going to rise on long tail and we want to control that as much as possible. The second part is, as people are asking more and more questions, we're seeing they're asking how, what, where and why. And we need to be able to create the best possible answers to those questions. So we were talking about Thomas Cook Airlines earlier. There will be questions such as, how can I get from Manchester to Las Vegas? Um, what is the cheapest flight from Manchester to Las Vegas? Where else can I fly from Manchester? Why can't I upgrade with points? Thousands of different variations of questions that people are asking with a huge opportunity for a brand to be able to answer those queries and provide a really meaningful answer and relationship with that consumer. So it's not just about managing the bidding of the long tail queries, but it's also about actually managing the ad copies and creating more and more variations of that ad copy to deliver the best possible answer. And that's either using tools that are available within the search engines that we work with or utilizing technology such as iActivate, which I know that Thomas Cook Airlines use, to create dynamic insertion of ad copy. The final bit is just around conversational query content. I thought the Diageo one was really interesting because it's not a single question that we're going to be asking in voice search. It's going to be an ongoing conversation. So that question is, how do I make a Moscow mule? You may get the answer to that through voice search, but the next question is, what vodka should I buy? And then it might be, what ingredients are in it? So it's an ongoing conversation back and forth. So when we're thinking about our content strategy, we need to be thinking about the content that we're creating that's going to answer all of those different questions within a conversation. So that's the first part, which is making sure that we embrace the long tail conversation. The second is around personalization. So for the best experience within voice. Because one of the insights was key around that the majority of voice searches are happening on mobile or smartphone. And that is the most personal device we have. Generally speaking, unless maybe you have young children who are using some apps on your phone, you don't share your smartphone with anyone else. Therefore, the expectation for personalization on a smartphone or a mobile is very, very high. There aren't actually paid search ads for voice right now. But when people are asking voice search queries to a smartphone, we are receiving the text version of that along your device. And so really the same rules apply to when we're managing non-voice search, which is to deliver personalization, we want to utilize first party data as much as possible. So matching brand CRM data into Google, into Bing, so that we can have a much better one-on-one -on -one relationship with our customers. There is nothing more powerful in driving the best performance than utilization of first party data. But then also managing the declared intent. The greatest thing about search is that we know what people want because they are declaring their intent by originally typing that into a search bar. But now with voice search, as the questions are getting much more specific, we're getting to learn a lot more about what people really want but also giving us much better opportunities to match that need with the right content. And finally, leveraging inferred intent. So as people are using those mobile devices to do voice search, we actually have got additional signals that help us you know, deliver a, a more personalized message because they're out and about. We know exactly 
where their location is, we know the time of day, we know the day of the week, we can use a whole host of other things from demographic search ads, a whole host of different inferred intents to deliver that best message. And I think this is particularly important within voice search, particularly now and in the future, because if you think about the way that voice search sometimes works today, there might be only one answer. And so the way that all those search engines are going to determine who gets that one answer spot is going to be the brand or whoever it is that's leveraging all of that intent, whether that's through first party data, declared or inferred. And finally, it's about making your brand discoverable for voice. So in a world where there is only one answer, the way that search engines work, they want to always bring up to the top the most relevant piece of content. It's about updating both our paid and SEO strategy to be able to make all of the content as discoverable as possible. There's SEO strategy, but there's also sometimes called tips and tricks that actually help you get closer to the top and make sure you're the answer on those questions. And the first one, which is probably the most impactful thing you can do in the world of SEO for voice search, is around semantic or schema markup. So essentially, just a bit of code that you implement on your website that helps you better categorize that content. So in the Diageo example of how do I make a Moscow Mule, if we are using a schema markup against that content and that content already exists, those are the things that's really going to help Google or Amazon or Bing or whoever it is identify that your piece of content is the best to be able to answer it because it's categorized in the right way. Speak to your tech teams or your IT teams or speak to the iProspect SEO team and they can take you through everything to do with schema markup to make sure that we're categorizing it all in the right way. The second part is online and local inventory feed management. So search engines, if we're able to plug in your inventory, whether that's online or within a store, so that the search engines know that your product is in stock, that just helps with the relevancy of that content. And search engines will always benefit from knowing that you've got things in stock and your search end result will go up as a result. So that's a really another quick win along with semantic markup. And then finally, it's just the voice opportunity analysis. I personally have been spending every day just trialing loads of different types of voice searches across all of our different brands. And at the moment, there are hardly any brands that are answering the questions within voice search. But as we know from Scott, there's 7.4 million people that are using voice search. And there's loads of quick wins through using tools from Bright Edge or whatever it might be, we can identify where the quick wins are that can have the biggest impact today. And then you apply all of these different factors to make sure that brands are the ones that are answering those questions within voice search. So those are the three things. So hopefully they are things that all of us, whether at our prospect or in the performance team or at our clients or working in brands, can go back and do over the next week to have a real impact with voice search.